and thank you for joining me for Ask Gardener Lynn. Gardening can be a bit tricky sometimes and just a little bit of help can turn troubled gardens around. So let's keep those gardens on track. So our question today comes from Jody. She's in Australia in a subtropic region, which would probably be a zone 10, which means she probably has no frost days. So her question is, what's the best storage method for potatoes, sweet potatoes, beets, etc.? So I'm thinking she wants that information for her region, which is a little trickier because we have, um, like here where I live in zone five, we have the cold winter months and we can utilize a root cellar and really store this stuff really well. But for her, she doesn't have that option, so we need to look at other options. So there are five different ways that we will uh, preserve food. So one is a root cellar, one is a refrigerator. We can put it in the freezer, we can can it, or we can dehydrate it. So let's go through a couple different vegetables in each one of these scenarios. All right, so let's talk about potatoes and how I would handle those if I lived in a zone 10 where I didn't have the root cellar or be able to store those in the ground because uh, I would have the cool temperatures. So uh, the root cellar is out. The potatoes can be stored in the refrigerator. Um, that does take up a lot of space, but it is possible. Um, another choice is to freeze the potatoes and you don't just throw them in the freezer. This, this is what I do and this is super cool. Uh, is I take the potatoes and I shred them like I was making hash browns. Um, then I blanch those in water. So I boil them in water for a few minutes and then I take them out and drain those. And then once they're drained, I actually form them into little potato patties and then freeze those on my cookie sheet. And then once they're frozen, I can pop them off, put them in a freezer bag, and then I have little uh, hash brown potatoes that I can cook any time that I want. So that's a really great way to do the potatoes that way. Um, you can can a potato. It is a low acid food. When you go to can a potato, you're gonna be uh, high pressure for a really long time. To me, that kind of kills the potato and they don't taste very good coming out of the jar, but it is possible. So that's one way that you could do those. And then the last one is dehydrating. So you could take your potatoes, you could shred them. You probably need to blanch them so they don't turn black and then put them on your dehydrator rack. And that's a really, really good way to do that. Um, I have this book. It's called Dry It, You'll Like It. I, mean, I think this was written way back, like 70s, 80s. I don't know. It's, it's an ancient book. I can look. It's just a really great book. Oh, June 1973, reprinted in April 1978. Anyways, uh, Jean McMahon, Jen, Jen McMahon, that's her name. Um, she will dehydrate pretty much anything. And this book, it's a really fun read. I think I saw it up on Amazon like last year or something. So this might be one that you hunt down. So if you're really into dehydrating, I mean, she does it all. So this is a great way to dehydrate and it's just to learn all the lessons. And her book is fun. It's got, you know, a bunch of like drawings and different things in it and just something nice uh, to have and to learn how to really use your dehydrator. Okay, the next vegetable is beets. Beets do good in the root cellar. Beets do great in the refrigerator. Uh, I've never put beets in the freezer, but it's probably possible. I would do the same thing. I would slice them, I would blanch them, and then I would uh, freeze them. Uh, carrots, the same thing. You can do that with them. Oh, back to the beets. Uh, canning beets, there again, would take a really long process like the potatoes, so you can do it. The other choice with beets is to pickle them and then you're adding the acids and then you can water bath those. So that would be good. And you can dehydrate the beets. Okay, next is carrots. Carrots, obviously the root cellar is awesome. Leaving them in the garden bed is awesome. She can't do that in her region. You can refrigerate them for a very long time. Uh, freezer. I have frozen carrots and absolutely adored them coming out of the freezer. So I take them and I shred them like I would the potatoes. I don't blanch them. They go right into the freezer bag and I do it in small, like one serving, two servings freezer bag. 
So when I take them out of the freezer, I put them in the fry pan and I actually fry them in a little bit of oil, uh, just like you would a hash brown. And oh man, are they good. So fried carrots are amazing. You can do that. If you want to fry them until they turn uh, kind of golden brown like a potato and they shrink quite a bit when you do that. You can can the carrots. They are again, same problem with potatoes. Um, I have done it. They don't taste that good, but it is possible. And of course, dehydrating is another great way to do them. All right, next is onions. That's another one that we like to hold through the winter time. Um, you can refrigerate them for a while. I've never frozen my onions. I imagine that's possible. I imagine the whole freezer would smell like onions. I don't can the onions unless I was pickling a small onion. That would be possible. I think dehydrating would probably be the best way to store your onions. Okay, next is winter squash. We'll use butternut squash as an example. Um, butternut squash likes to store at about 60 degrees. So there may be a closet or something that's a little cooler uh, that you could store your winter squash. Once they start to get a little soft on me, I'll go ahead and cook those up. And then I take all the pulp and put it in a freezer uh, container and I'll freeze that and then I'll eat that throughout the rest of the year out of the freezer. Um, I have never dehydrated winter squash. I don't know how that would work out. It might be kind of strange. Okay, the last one is sweet potato. They also like to be stored on the warm side with your winter squash. So they're not gonna want the refrigeration um, I have never put them in the freezer. I think if you were going to, you would shred them, blanch them like the potato, and then freeze them in patties. That would probably work really good that way. Uh, I have not dehydrated them either, but I imagine that would work pretty good. So there's some few different ideas for you to play with your vegetables. It's really fun to grow all your own food, and so you need a few preserving methods to get those to go year round. So if you have a garden question that you would like answered, please click on the link below this video and submit your question. And if you'd like to learn more about high performance gardening and want to see us grow a whole season of vegetables week by week for 33 weeks, then sign up for the High Performance Garden Show. So in the show, we follow a high performance garden from seed to putting it to bed at the end of the season. So this is the best insider's look at watching everything that we do with the vegetable plants week by week, all season long. We'll even show you a professional trellising system that you can use for your, for your garden. So the show is free and it's online and you can watch it anytime. So go to thelivingfarm.org slash high-performance-garden-show to sign up or you can click on a link below this video. So I wanna thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel for more high performance gardening information and submit your gardening questions so you can get the answers that you need. Until next time, may your garden be easy, fun, productive, and always organic.